This is Pastor Paul Brunton from the Jesus Movement. Today I'd like to talk to you about an extraordinary place in Israel uh, by the name of Masada. Now Masada is a fortress city that was built on top of an incredibly high uh, mountain uh, which is uh, right next to the Dead Sea. Uh, it is actually south of Ein Gedi which was uh, King David's former stronghold where he was hiding from King Saul. Uh, and it was a significant uh, place in uh, Israel's history. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the significance of Masada is that it was the last stronghold where Jewish people, when the Romans uh, invaded Israel uh, and, of course, moved their way down to Jerusalem, uh, many people uh, fled uh, Jerusalem for fear of the Romans. And of course that was really wise because uh, they destroyed the temple uh, in 70 AD as the prophecies uh, said uh, that it would and that it would never be rebuilt. And of course to this very day it has never been rebuilt. And we also had uh, the, the town, or sorry, the, or the city of, of Jerusalem uh, physically <coughs> burnt to the ground. So we have this significant event uh, where people... Uh, feared for their lives and rightly so because uh, the Romans came in and many many people were massacred. Uh, this was also at the same time that a little bit further up along the Dead Sea where the Qumran uh, Dead Sea Scre uh, Sea Scrolls were uh, found. Uh, the Essene community that was living there uh, they had the foresight when all of this was happening to take all of the scrolls that they had been transcribing, place them into clay jars and pop them up into the caves uh, to hide them, uh, understanding uh, that they were under threat and that they were so important and significant uh, to, uh, to basically preserve uh, the written words of the Bible as we know it today. <coughs> the Essenes also uh, were massacred and that was the end of them uh, at the hands of the Romans. So this was a very significant uh, part of the history in Israel. Uh, to this day, uh, Masada holds a special uh, significance in the hearts of Israel's people uh, because the story that is attached to it uh, is incredibly tragic. So what I'm going to do uh, as I take you on this journey, I'm going to uh, show you a number of pictures from Masada so you can see what it's like. I'm going to uh, show some video clips uh, of Masada from on top of Masada and I'm also going to show you a video clip riding a cable car which passes over what's called the snake trail uh, on its way up to the top of the, the summit and uh, I'm also going to play you a historical video that's been put together which tells the tragic story of what happens at Masada so uh, before I put the uh, first video on um, just to give it some significance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the, the Romans when they arrived there because it was so high it was incredibly inaccessible. So they built a series of encampments that encircled Masada and uh, I'll, I'll uh, have these uh, pictures and it's also included in the video where you can see the footprints or the remains of the ruins of each of these Roman settlements around the base of Masada. Uh, now they did this because they had to undertake a vast exercise to uh, work out how they were going to get up to the to the top where the Jewish people were hiding. So again this is a uh, fortress that was built by King Herod. Uh, it was quite an extraordinary uh, facility if you will because not only was it a fortress with dwellings inside to uh, house people but uh, it also had some extravagant um, structures on there that were built for the pleasure of King Herod. Today when you go up there, uh, there's cisterns up there which are uh, designed to hold water. Uh, there is actually a, a Byzantine chapel uh, which was built later uh, up there after these events happened. There are the remnants of a, a synagogue uh, that were up there. Uh, there's a whole pile of archaeological finds which help to tell the story of what took place there and there's many ruins from the actual Romans themselves. Uh, so it's an extraordinary uh, place to visit. Uh, but 
on the eastern side, so on the side of the Dead Sea, uh, coming up to the top of this, it's very, very steep. And so there's a trail that's actually called the Snake Trail that goes up there. And again, I'll show that uh, on a video uh, for you. But I'm just going to so you can get an idea of how treacherous it was and why the Romans uh, had to take the decision they did. Uh, I'm just going to read out uh, from the historian uh, Josephus uh, Flavius uh, what he wrote about this particular trail. Okay, so on this, <coughs> this trail, he writes, The former path they call the snake, seeing a resemblance to that animal in its narrowness and continual windings. One traversing it must firmly plant each foot alternately. Destruction faces him for on either side yawned chasms so terrific as to daunt the hardiest. And he says of the structure, he enclosed the entire suburb, so this is uh, talking about King Herod, a circuit measuring seven furlongs with a wall of white stone, 12 cubits high and eight broad. On it stood 37 towers, 50 cubits high, from which access was obtained to apartments constructed round the whole interior of the wall. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see from that that this is quite an impressive uh, structure and uh, it was highly uh, inaccessible. So when the Romans arrived, uh, they had to come up with an alternate plan to, to be able to access this. So what they actually did uh, was they actually built a, a ramp on the western side and they literally moved incredible volumes of rubble uh, and just kept uh, this ramp being built until they were able to uh, literally walk up to the top, push their siege ramps up and then attack the fortress <coughs> gates and the walls themselves. So um, I'm going to pop on this uh, first video and on this first video, it's a, a video that's been recorded that you would see if you went to the visitor center there. And it shows you uh, the story of what actually happened there. And it's very, very uh, moving and very, very tragic. So I'll just pop that on now and uh, you can enjoy that. And then I'll return after the video uh, to show you what it's like today uh, and to further explain uh, the, the actual uh, environment within which it's situated in. So uh, please enjoy. Extras, they created a colossal film featuring the rebel leader, Eleazar, son of Yadir, and the Roman commander, Flavius Silva, in the leading roles. However, in the movie, unlike real life, no one really deals with the dilemmas or personal struggles, and certainly not with the more problematic aspects of the story. Then where should we start our story? <laughs> We could start with the Hasmoneans, who were the first to discover the advantages of this isolated cliff in the heart of the desert. Or we could start at the end, with the dramatic project of the Masada excavations, with Igael Yadin, the head of the excavation team, who would stand on the mountain and read Josephus Flavius' description of the account, and everyone around him could actually hear the echoes of the fighting. Or we could start the quest with King Herod. Herod, who ruled under the auspices of the Romans, built himself a magnificent fortress here on the mountain, which was to be a sanctuary in troubled times. And believe me, he really had troubles. Herod, like any other king, built his palaces to the highest standards of his day. One of them is this western palace. Herod's architect was probably a short guy. Here he built himself a bathhouse, and he would put his lamp here and enter his bath. What can I tell you? This king loved the good life. Until now, we spoke about Herod. It wasn't the splendor of Herod's style that made Masada what it is today. The year is 66 AD. The Jews rebel against the Roman Empire. Four years later, the temple is destroyed. Jerusalem falls. Everywhere else, the rebels were suppressed. Masada is the last stronghold where there are still Jewish rebels. And believe me, they didn't need Herod's palaces. The rooms in the wall were divided and used as living quarters. They lived from food in the storerooms, and they drank water from the cisterns, kindly left behind by Herod long ago. Right from the beginning of the excavations, signs of the rebels were found elsewhere, 
in the palaces, in the ritual palaces, and in particular in the wall. The deepest experience I went through in Masada was when they found in this particular room the first piece of scroll. To see Hebrew letters coming out of the ground, the same letters which are used until today. Later, more fragments of scrolls were found. One I found with my own hands, but the first experience is unforgettable. Throughout the revolt, groups of refugees sought asylum on the mountain. About 1,000 rebels gathered at this fortress in the heart of the wilderness. In 73 AD, the Romans' 10th Legion arrived with thousands of armed soldiers who deployed themselves around the mountain. An enormous war machine. And the movies do it best, after the Romans, of course. The Romans built an attack ramp. The besieged rebels rolled stones down it. The Romans lifted a tower to the top of the ramp, equipped with a battering ram to smash the wall. The besieged erect a wood and earthen wall to sustain the blow of the battering ram. The Romans burn it, but the wind almost burns their own tower. Then the wind veering as if by divine providence to the south, blowing with full force in the opposite direction, flung flames against the wall, which now was all ablaze. And in the evening, when the wall was burnt and breached, the Roman army returned to its camps, assured that the whole affair would be over by morning. But Eleazar had ideas of his own. This is it, the last night. My friends, we've reached the climax of the drama. However, unlike the move with families, we're forced to decide slavery or death. Eleazar had no doubts but he had yet to convince his comrades in arms. Ladies and gentlemen, the speech of Elazar. Oh, my loyal followers, the time has now come that obliges us to make that resolution true in practice. Let our wives die before they are abused, and our children before they have tasted of slavery and preserve ourselves in freedom as an excellent funeral monument for us, as we have preferred death before slavery. Once Iga Elyadin was asked what was the most important artifact he found on Masada, dozens of priceless objects were found here, he answered, but if I must point to one find, it would be these Astraka. These pot chairs. These may be the lots that I'm holding now. Hot chairs on which the rebels wrote their names. Ten men who were chosen were the only ones who remained. Their equipment had already burned and each of them had already killed his wife and children. Then they drew the lots. Who would kill the ninth man and fall on his own sword? And in the morning the Romans arrived. And besides two women and a few children, everyone was dead. After the drama came silence. The silence was broken in the 5th century for nearly 200 years by a community of Byzantine monks. 1,200 years later, the first explorers came and rediscovered the mountain. Then the members of the youth movements, seeking a symbol of Jewish heroism, discovered Masada and adopted the mountain. After them came the hikers and the tourists. Masada had become a focus of pilgrimage. Professor Netzer, what do you really think about the act? At death to a life of slavery. So it's death or freedom? Yes, death as a free man or slavery in the hands of the Romans. Which choice would you make? No matter what, Masada has become a symbol of staunch resistance against a fierce enemy. And if it is a symbol, then perhaps this might be some kind of victory. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to climb the mountain. Uh, hello again. Uh, well, I can I'm just imagine, uh, as I was, that it, you found this to be an extremely uh, moving and uh, tragic uh, story of the events of what happened uh, all those years ago there at Masada in Israel. Um, I found the whole uh, story incredibly interesting. Uh, I found it incredibly tragic and, and saddening. Um, I found the ingenuity and the determination of the Roman uh, army 
quite fascinating uh, the fact that they would go to any lengths whatsoever uh, to overcome uh, an enemy that stood before them so it gives us a great understanding of the might of the Roman Empire and why it was so famous and and long lived for that matter uh, an empire that was spoken about by the prophet Daniel um, that would actually come and it would become an adversary against God's chosen people uh, so it, it is a uh, an extraordinary uh, event and as the video shows you you can see that to this very day is a significant place uh, for the people in Israel the Jewish nation uh, as it is today and we can also see and understand why you know the Jewish soldiers to this very day uh, swear an oath uh, that they will never uh, give up their land again as what happened at the time of Masada so they make a pilgrimage there um, as part of their initial training and uh, always uh, acknowledge and remember those that fell before them and obviously use that as a determination never uh, to let that happen again uh, if there was an invading uh, army so I, you know, I hope you uh, as I said I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's informed you and opened your eyes to some of the history of Israel there uh, now next I'm just going to pop on a video so you can see what it looks today like today and this particular video is of a cable car ride which I filmed as I went up the the uh, from the base uh, up to the summit of Masada and what you'll see is that we're actually traveling above what's known as the snake trail which I mentioned earlier which was uh, uh, so tre treacherous as the historian uh, Josephus uh, explained to us so please enjoy <laughs> Can you hear me? We got the cable car and so on. There's a track in front of us, people are actually walking all the way at the top, make sure we take the easy air conditioned way in the cable car. Is there a more people? Working very hard to get to the top. Well, hello again. Uh, well, that was certainly a bit of a an exciting ride up the uh, cable car. You could probably notice uh, behind me. Uh, quite a large uh, noise uh, in that cable car as all the people uh, were speaking in their many languages and uh, obviously quite excited about what they were seeing, uh, excited about the ride in the cable car itself and of course excited for what was to come when they arrived at the summit. Uh, once uh, arriving at the top of the summit, uh, jumping out of the cable car, 
uh, went for a walk and, and was walking along the eastern side facing in a southerly direction. Uh, and so the next film clip which I'm going to provide for you gives you a look from the actual summit and gives you a, an understanding of the, the, the scale and the breathtaking uh, views which, which you uh, can't help but um, be affected by. You know, when I was there in Israel, standing on top of uh, the summit there looking down, uh, the video uh, shows you how extremely high it is. Uh, but uh, when you're actually there, it, it takes your breath away, literally. You know, you're standing there and you're looking across at the uh, at the Dead Sea uh, towards the bottom there, where all the salt uh, farms uh, begin on the on the lower portion. And on the other side, you're looking at across the what's today's country, Jordan. Um, and uh, as I pan the video uh, up and down, you'll see some of the imprints of the Roman ruins. Uh, uh, that uh, remain at the base. I'll show you uh, three of those uh, on the eastern side and you can sort of see uh, looking down towards the visitor center from which I, I came up. So um, I'll just put that on now and uh, please uh, enjoy this video. Well, we're up here on top of Masada. So I'm just facing the camera up in a northerly direction. You can see the Dead Sea there and Jordan on the other side. And uh, as we pan around, you'll see this is where the Dead Sea comes to an end. Where it sort of stops. And then it transits into these areas. So again, when this fortress, as we pan around, you'll see the, the salt farms that are formed down there as we go southwards. So that's down towards ancient, ancient Sodom, I uh, believe, down in that bottom section there. But the elevation here is extraordinary. Give you the scale, there's Roger down there in front, and uh, yeah, it's just breathtaking up here, it's just incredible to be here. So just another video from Masada, looking further south, we've moved along the ridge a bit, and you can see all the salt farms there. This is basically the end of the end of the Dead Sea as we know it. Again panning up to the north. It's just so amazing you almost can't stop taking pictures of this, it's incredible. You can see down the bottom there those imprints of the ancient towns. There's a second one, a third one, and that's the complex they've built there for the tourism that we've come up on the cable car with. And then we sort of get an idea of the height that we're at. Point the camera down. Well, hello again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that video and, and uh, had the opportunity to understand uh, uh, the, the size of it. Uh, so that's only filmed from one side. Uh, the particularly uh, breathtaking uh, views that, that you actually saw there. Uh, so following um, that video, um, and uh, I'm going to pop up for you a few uh, pictures uh, to wrap up uh, this look at Masada and its historical significance in Israel. Uh, on these particular pictures that I'm going to put up, we're going to show you uh, a couple of models, and the models actually show you what it looked like in the day during the time of the Romans. So you'll see the buildings that step down what looks like the, uh, the nose or the northern end of the uh, Masada, and uh, there's three different levels there. And you can see the incredible ingenuity uh, of King Herod and the builders that work for him to build such an impressive uh, range of, of structures that were actually there. Now, there's a lot of structures that he built. Uh, he had his own uh, bathhouse, for example. Uh, he had his, um, his uh, personal uh, dwellings that were actually there. And then they had all the structures associated with the, 
palace as it stepped down. Uh, so you can imagine the incredibly magnificent views uh, that they must have had there and also the security uh, that they must have felt uh, being so high up from the earth. Uh, just before I go and I pop these slides on, I just want to mention as well one of the things that struck me there that one of the great uh, engineering achievements of the building of this was that they actually had to bring water onto Masada and being so high up you could imagine uh, how did they bring water and supplies up? So one of the answers to that is that they actually used to use don donkeys and they would bring food up and they would also uh, bring water up in bladders on the back of the donkeys. Uh, however, you can imagine that would be extremely uh, limited. Now, when uh, I was there, there's a huge uh, cistern, like a massive cave dug into the top of the um, Masada there. Um, I will pop on a video, uh, sorry, a photo, which will show that uh, after I finish speaking. Um, but what they did was they built a whole series of uh, channels, if you will, grooves that uh, ran from the valley on the western side of Masada, and uh, the water would move along at such a rate uh, that it was actually able to penetrate into the uh, side of Masada uh, which seems so far up um, and the way that that would actually work was because they dug a system down deep into the start itself and made sure that the base of that was lower than the water that was entering into it so uh, incredible place and incredible engineering feat uh, by those who served King Herod uh, incredible historical story uh, of the Roman Empire as they came and uh, vanquished the last of the Jewish people. Uh, incredible bravery of those Jewish people as they decided to take the lives of one another in order to uh, never uh, die by the actual sword. And an incredible legacy that it's left today uh, for the nation of Israel as they uh, use this as a place of remembrance uh, to determine that they will never, never uh, stand by and uh, basically kill each other or commit suicide in order to let an invading nation take over them ever again. So uh, I pray you've enjoyed this. Uh, it was an extraordinary place to visit. Uh, it really touched my heart and uh, I pray that you've enjoyed this. So God bless you and I look forward to uh, showing you some more videos and more interesting stories about the great land of Israel. Goodbye for now.